Hello everyone, Helder here. Uh, today I wanted to talk about this uh, medic kit. It's known as a uh, medic leg rig kit or a uh, CCRK, which is Combat Casualty Rescue Kit, made from a company called North American Rescue, uh, very respected in the uh, first responder community. Uh, this is a very high quality kit. Uh, to begin with, just talking about the bag uh, itself. All right, you, you have the name recognition and you have the quality, so keep in mind that you're gonna also pay for it. All right, so now it's all about justifying whether this is something that uh, is right for you and right for your kit. Uh, as you all know, this is uh, all about finding your, your personal preparedness and uh, what's best for you and what's gonna suit your needs the best. So once again, this is uh, uh, a lot of uh, standard issue for uh, military combat medics, uh, police SWAT, uh, EMS, fire rescue, and just uh, first responders in general. Uh, so you could imagine this is not a toy. Uh, this isn't your uh, cheap uh, knockoff uh, stuff that's coming from overseas, specifically from China. And, uh, you know, you can keep in mind that once again, when you want quality, you're going to have to pay that extra for the quality. So just starting out with this bag to begin with, it's made of uh, 500D Cordura uh, nylon, uh, near infrared signature reduction. Uh, another technology called Gilly Tex IR or infrared signature reduction hardware. All right, it's sand and water resistant, uh, self repairing zippers uh, with what they call silent 550 cord poles. Uh, it has a uh, Molly type uh, setup, so you could attach it to your Molly gear. All right, so there's actually three ways that you can attach this, and probably more if you're creative. Uh, you could attach it to a duty belt or a tactical belt. Uh, once again, you could attach it to your uh, leg. All right, and it usually comes, it does come with a second uh, strap, but for my purposes, I uh, took it off. All right, and once again, as we discussed, it can also attach to your uh, Molly gear, which is, or Molly setup, which is uh, what I usually prefer um, as far as uh, when I have it uh, with me uh, in the field. So before I actually get into the contents of uh, what's inside this kit, I want you to keep in mind that I like uh, to do these reviews, especially for our Natural Training Center members, for them to get ideas of okay, well, maybe I can't afford this high-speed uh, piece of equipment, but that shouldn't mean that there shouldn't be a casualty kit uh, or an advanced first aid kit uh, in your survival gear or in your go bag or in your vehicle um, or all three. All right, so, you know, once again, keeping that in mind, use this as an idea of saying, all right, well, I really can't afford that, but let me see what's inside of this thing and what the, uh, the high-speed people that are using this on a daily basis, you know, what their needs are because there was a lot of thought as you could tell that went into this and a lot of experience that went into putting this kit together. So if anything, use it as, as an idea and maybe start building your own kit at a, at a, at a more or a less inexpensive way. And little by little, you could just keep adding to it. Um, once again, you probably won't get this quality and these specs, but at least you're doing something for your preparedness as opposed to, to nothing, all right? So right out here, it has this little pouch. Keep in mind that uh, many items have been taken out of this kit. I've also added uh, items to this kit, once again, depending on my needs and uh, the uses that it does get when it's deployed out with us. All right, so just in here on the outside, we're, there's a little pouch where we keep gloves. All right, so it comes with some gloves in there. I will write all the specs in our blog post rather than going over each individual item in here because once again, even the manufacturer on their site states that it changes often. Uh, you'll probably have the main components in there, but then little types of bandages or whatever might switch out uh, here and there, you know, depending on improvements, uh, depending on availability. All right, so once again, we open this up inside. We have all sorts of key stuff, but you know, as you could tell the way that everything, this is all stuff that I added in here. Uh, extra stuff, but you could tell everything in here from your high-speed tourniquet kit to all sorts of, of gauze and, and chest compression kits and I mean it just goes on and on and on all right you have all towards sorts of uh, of tubes and and, uh, and uh, uh, Decompression needles and I mean <laughs> triage cards uh, chest compression uh, um, You know packaging and just, you know, and of course I added a, a couple other compresses and bandages because it's stuff that we go through in the field, even for, for minor incidents. Um, so once again, I could never have enough of those. And that just comes from my need and my experience. Um, you know, combat gauze that comes with the kit. Um, once again, I'll label everything in there. But 
what you have to keep in mind is while I'm out in the field, there's going to be certain needs where I'm really going to need this. And there might be other times where it might be overkill because I'm in an area or we're hiking in an area or camping in an area that's very populated or probably have their own first aid squad right, right there. So once again, it's all suited to your needs. I might have this kit for a certain situation, all right, but I might take it out of my go bag or survival bag or, or whatever the case may be, depending on what the mission I have is. Uh, I could be hiking in a place that's super rural that I'm going to want to have this with me. And I be, might be hiking in a state park where it's, you know, not that big of a deal. I know that I can get to, uh, to first responders ASAP if somebody in my group or myself uh, gets, uh, gets injured. All right. So once again, it's all, you know, I'm not going to carry this extra, you know, four pounds um, with me or nearly four pounds with me. If I know that there's really not going to be any rhyme or reason, I'll still have a first aid kit with me, but it'll be a lot less of, uh, of this type of gear and, uh, you know, more for, for, you know, let's say regular incidents that we get, you know, like blisters and, and little uh, cuts and scrapes. All right. So depending on your mission, that should dictate how you're prepared. All right. So it's never that one size fits all. All right. You might have your survival pack where you're going to throw everything in there. Right. But, you know, you, there's other things that you have to keep in mind as far as weight. And can you carry that bag with you uh, as well as everything else that you plan on bringing with you? And let's not forget your family, your tribe, those people that are going to be with you that are also depending on you. Another aspect of uh, preparedness that I really want to go over is the fact that um, your training. If you have all of this uh, equipment out there with you, right, you're already ahead of the game. But if you don't know how to use it and use it well and have experience and know what all the nooks and crannies of this kit contain and what their uses are, it's relatively useless out there for you unless somebody in your group or family knows how to utilize this. Uh, we teach uh, firearm instruction at Natural Training Center. So if I'm on a regular indoor range, they have everything there for us, I'm not worried. If I'm out and shooting at a public outdoor range and I'm the range safety officer and I'm the one there leading um, the, uh, the detail, so to speak, or, or, or the course, uh, or just running the range in general, I'm gonna wanna have this with me because it's my responsibility. And also my role in Natural Training Center of being the head coach and so on and so forth, I always have to not just think about myself, I have to think about the people that are uh, on this event or adventure with me, right? Because that is my responsibility. So once again, your role will dictate how much extra stuff you're carrying around with you, all right? But I always seem to have that uh, coach or, or parental, you know, type of thing that, you know, not only do I need to bring this for me, but I need to bring this for everybody else just in case. And that's a big factor when it comes to preparedness. You don't want to overdo it, but you certainly don't want to under, under, uh, underestimate um, your, your needs out there. All right. So that's, that's a big part of preparedness sticking with the training. All right. The company itself, North American rescue has a YouTube channel, uh, with some tutorials on there that are very lengthy. That'll actually go over a few of these products. Uh, so that's a, a good source, let's say to get some information, uh, get together with your American red cross, other organizations, take more of these advanced, um, uh, courses, first aid courses, uh, first responder type courses that are available to the general public and just get to know what you really have. If you have somebody, we're fortunate enough in natural training center to have a certified EMT as one of our members. So he shares a lot of information, uh, that's out there because it's, it's real world stuff, especially he's in Newark, New Jersey. So, uh, those of you that are familiar with that name know that there's a, a lot of practical application there. Uh, you know, not always good. And, you know, of course we worry about him, so on and so forth, but we're also very fortunate to have people like that in the world that care, because I don't know if that's a job that I could do to be dead honest with you. All right. But it's all about the training. Don't use it as an excuse. Uh, always go out there, find the information. There's a lot of resources out there, a lot of credible resources that are free. All right. Uh, and keep that in mind. Don't just train yourself, train the people that you're going to be out there with. I always think about the same scenario. What if it's me that becomes the patient or the victim? All right. That's, that's no joke. Right. And now I have all this high speed stuff with me, but I can't use it on myself because I'm probably unconscious or, or incapable uh, of doing anything like that. So now if my group isn't prepared, you know, that's, that was my fault. You know, that was my lack of preparation for going out there unprepared and I'm the one that's going to have to pay for it. All right. So keep all of this in mind, do your homework. All right. Uh, use this setup as a guideline to fit what's best for you in your, in your survival kits, go kits, uh, mobile kits, stuff that you stage in your vehicle. But if I'm going to leave you with anything on this review, besides this pretty cool setup, all right, and high speed gear here is to prepare yourself, uh, with training, with knowledge on how to deploy this stuff. Cause if you don't learn it now, when shit hits the fan and all the other 
emergency aspects come into it and you're shaking through this whole freaking scenario, you know, keep in mind that you're going to fall back on your training. All right. Hope you enjoyed this review. I hope uh, what I'm saying isn't uh, too strenuous, uh, but it's real. It's from the heart and it's from experience. Thank you for listening to this review.